So welcome to uh, Geneva, uh, Mrs. Um, Diane Aloyi, you are the representative of the Baha'i at UN in Geneva. Yes, thank you for inviting me. So we are going to have an interview on questions of uh, Baha'i and uh, religious minorities in general and uh, human rights in Iran. First question I have, as you are the representative of the Baha'i, um, what is the importance of the Baha'i being in Iran and what is their situation right now? Well, I think um, Baha'is are present all around the world. There are Baha'is in every single country of the planet. But um, I think Iran is uh, important for every single Baha'i, not only Iranian Baha'is, but every Baha'i, because it's the birthplace of the Baha'i faith. So that's where uh, Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, was born. That's where he you know, lived and that's his origins are from there. So of course, a lot of the holy places of the Baha'i faith are there. And so Iran has, a, in a way, a special place in the heart of every, every Baha'i. Um, the situation of the Baha'is is uh, very uh, dire at the, at the moment because uh, um, there is an institutional persecution of the Baha'is. That persecution uh, starts from uh, non-recognition in the constitution because as you know the constitution of the Islamic Republic of Iran um, stipulates that the, con the religion of the country is Islam, Shia Islam, um, but that the three recognized uh, religious minorities are the Christians, the Jews and the Zoroastrians. So it leaves the Baha'is completely un unprotected and, uh, and subject to any form of discrimination. Uh, and harassment. And that uh, is totally government orchestrated. Today there are 118 to date uh, Baha'is who are in prison. Uh, many hundreds have been in prison. At the beginning of the Islamic Revolution, 200, over 200 were killed, many, many tortured. Baha'is cannot work in the public sector. Um, and even in the private sector, there's a lot of pressure that's been put on, on them. Um, their shops are closed, um, people are dismissed, from, there's pressure on employers who are not Baha'is to dismiss the, uh, the Baha'i uh, employees, etc. etc. Uh, young uh, Baha'is cannot go to university, they're still denied of access to higher education for all Baha'is. Although there are some Baha'is who are now uh, inside the Iranian University to date, no Baha'i youth has been able to complete his or her university studies uh, because they're expelled as soon as they're, it's discovered that they're Baha'is. Um, even Baha'i cemeteries, so even when you're dead, you're not protected. Baha'i cemeteries are bulldozed, desecrated. Um, Baha'i children are subject to um, uh, vilification and, uh, and persecution by, even by their school teachers. So the situation is very bad. And on top of it, as you know very well, because I think it's exactly the same, in fact, for the Sufis, um, there is also a campaign of incitement to hatred in the media against members of the life. So through TV programs, um, even like serials that seem to be very harmless, uh, uh, press uh, articles, radio talks, there is a whole campaign of creating uh, incitement to hatred um, against the Baha'is and that has led to a lot of um, destruction of Baha'i properties, of, I mean not of Baha'i properties, of properties of Baha'is with graffiti, sometimes places of burnt down. But of course we know that um, although this may occur through plainclothes agents, certainly in a country like Iran, it has to be condoned by the government. If not, it could not happen. Okay, so um, as you are now in Geneva and uh, you have a seat in uh, Geneva in order to protect Baha'i's rights all over the world, I guess all over the world, uh, what exactly are you doing to raise awareness of this situation of Baha'i in Iran and uh, do you feel you are helped enough? Well, I think that um, we, the Baha'i international community tries to use all the mechanisms that it has to be able to protect the Baha'is in a peaceful manner because we don't believe in, uh, 
in anything that is violent. And so therefore we try to use the UN mechanisms um, through this. And of course, by uh, giving information to all the special rapporteurs, not only the special rapporteur on Iran, Mr. Ahmad Shahid, but also the special rapporteur on freedom of religion and belief, Mr. Heiner Bielefeld, the independent expert on minority issues, Ms. Rita Itzak, etc., etc., all the various different mechanisms. And they have been reporting, uh, sometimes even if those special rapporteurs were allowed to visit Iran, uh, in previous years they were, they're no longer, um, they were able to report, to even visit Baha'is in prison and to report on the situation, to make very useful recommendations for the situation of the Baha'is. Then we also have, of course, governments who speak up uh, on the defense of the Baha'is in these UN forums, who then include the situation of the Baha'is in the resolutions that are adopted also here and at the General Assembly in New York. And we, of course, ourselves make uh, statements to the Council. So I think that in this way, I think we're... Um, and also there is, sorry, I forgot, very important our contribution to the Universal Periodic Review, which is another mechanism that the UN has, um, and where a lot of recommendations were made and accepted by the Iranian government, but none of them have been implemented. And uh, so this is a, a very uh, also good signal uh, that Iran is really absolutely not willing to do anything uh, on the situation. But we believe it's been... It's been um, it's had a preventive measure, you know, it has, it's giving a strong signal to the Iranian government that their actions are watched. And so they cannot do, although they commit very, very grave human rights violations, at least they know that there is a form of monitoring and they have to keep up a good face. So I think it prevents from even, God forbid, worse human rights violations that could occur. And that did occur at the beginning of the, of the Islamic Republic. Um. So, you feel that there is anyone or anything that can support you more in, in raising awareness or stopping the regime? I think what matters today is that um, there is support from uh, other human rights groups. And we do have support from international human rights groups like Amnesty or Human Rights Watch, Refidash, but also from Iranian. Uh, human rights groups, and I think that this awareness that we all have to stand up for one another is increasing, which is very important and very positive. And uh, and also from other religious uh, organizations, and um, I think that uh, there is an NGO committee on freedom of religion and belief of various NGOs, and we all collaborate together. And I think that this is very important because it also gives a signal of solidarity between those religions, whether they're persecuted or not, but we stand up for one another. So obviously you're in contact with uh, diverse um, NGOs and religious groups. Um, so uh, I know oh, it is known that uh, the regime always claims that all these groups are um, playing the game of the big enemies. So, what is your answer to these claims or to these uh, denouncements? You know, I think that if there were no human rights violations, then there wouldn't be any problem. So, I think that when you are faced with something that is untruthful, like what you just stated, I don't think it is, you know, there is a need for us to justify ourselves whether it's true or not because it's untruthful. But the answer is that if you stop human rights violations against Baha'is, against Sufis, against Iranians, then, you know, there wouldn't be any problem. If there were no persecution of the Baha'is, I wouldn't be speaking up here at the UN because the Baha'is would be free, like there are Baha'is in Switzerland, in France, everywhere in Africa, who are very free, and we never talk about the situation of the Baha'is in these countries. So that uh, leads me to the last question. Uh, as you say, there are Baha'i all over the world. In, in which way all these Baha'i uh, support, like all the other religious groups who might not be uh, as um, spread it through the world as the Baha'i and who have maybe not as the same means to uh, um, defend their rights or of their friends. I think that, um, you know, Baha'i groups around the world are not so knowledgeable either about the system of the UN and everything. I mean, 
Baha'i around the world are, are active in, the, in their own field, trying to improve the situation of their fellow citizens, trying to improve the advancement of civilization in their countries through different projects that they have. And they feel this sense of solidarity, of course, for the Baha'is in Iran because they're their fellow brothers. But here at the UN, we're very happy to be able to um, uh, lend our support and particularly our experience because we have a, an experience of over 30 years working with the UN with all our other colleagues, whether they're Iranians or not, actually, it can be from other countries as well, who face persecution in how to be able to uh, use the mechanisms of the United Nations in order to also have their voice heard in the same way that we have been able to have our voice heard. Wonderful. So I understand that um, your focus is the mechanism of the UN. Is there above these mechanisms of the international um, organizations, is there above this or besides this, is, is there another chance of, of supporting people or bringing the regime to stop even more these persecutions? I think public opinion. So I think that, you know, by awareness raising, by uh, putting things on the media, on the internet, by having interviews, by having people interested, I think that um, the more public awareness there is. You know, the Iranian government um, sometimes uh, says that it, it doesn't really care about what, what the criticism that is about them because they think they're, they're doing the right thing. But in fact, it's not true. So I think that if there, the more public awareness there is, certainly the more pressure there will be on the Iranian government to stop its human rights violations. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for your interest and also good luck in the defense of the rights of, uh, of uh, all the religious minorities who are persecuted. Yeah, thank you very much.